If any archetype has gone through constant pain of having potential but not quite being good, then Red Eyes has taken first place. Being a fan favorite since its debut in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG set Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, and being the ace monster of Joey Wheeler in the Yu-Gi-Oh! animated series, Red Eyes Black Dragon was rewarded with its own archetype. Even though certain cards involved Red Eyes Black Dragon before the set's release, like Red Eyes Black Chick, Inferno Fire Blast, Red Eyes Wavering, and Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, none of these cards were helpful to the 2400 attack Dark Dragon. The only cards that consistently saw play were Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and Red Eyes Wavering due to Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon's ability to special summon any dragon from the hand or graveyard, and Red Eye Wavering's ability to banish itself to special summon Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon if it was in the graveyard. However, the first wave of support it received was supposed to rectify Red Eyes' problems, and didn't quite do that. So today, we'll take a look at the Red Eyes archetype and why it failed in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. The first group of Red Eyes support was shown in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG set, Dragon of Legends 2, with 7 new cards. The first was Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword, a level 7 fusion monster. Even though it's stated to be a Red Eyes monster, this card was more of a novelty as it required Claw of Hermos to special summon it. It was irrelevant to the archetype outside of being seen in the anime series. Unlike Black Dragon Sword, the other cards did see some testing if not played. Four of these cards were ritual cards. Lord of Red was a level 8 Dark Dragon ritual monster. It could be ritual summoned through Red Eyes Transmigration, had 2000 attack, and once per turn allowed you to target and pop a monster in the field if a monster effect was activated except for itself, and pop or spell a trap once per turn if a spell a trap card was activated. Its ritual spell, Red Eyes Transmigration, requires you to tribute monsters who combines levels equals 8 or higher to summon it out. The next ritual monster was Paladin the Dark Dragon, a level 4 Dark Dragon ritual monster with all the same effects as Paladin of White Dragon. It could destroy a defense position monster during the damage step. However, unlike Paladin of White Dragon, this card allowed you to tribute to summon any Red Eyes monster from your hand or deck, not just Red Eyes Black Dragon. Such cards like Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon or Red Eyes Wavering could also be summoned off this card's effect, leading to a wider variety of plays. Dark Dragon Ritual was also similar to Paladin of White Dragon's ritual spell, White Dragon Ritual, except you ritual summon Paladin of Dark Dragon and get the bonus of being able to banish it from the graveyard to get a Red Eye Spell or Trap card from your deck, except during the turn of Ascent to the graveyard. This first wave of monster support was very unique. The ritual monsters all had decent and powerful effects. Unfortunately, the deck lacked ways to search for Lord of Red. As cards like Preparation of Riots were the best way to get to level 7 or lower ritual monsters, but couldn't get Lord of Red, who was level 8. Advanced Ritual Art was an option to play, since Red Eye's Black Dragon was a normal monster but you'd have to play a level 1 monster, which made the deck more inconsistent and bricky. To further make it more awkward to play Lord of the Red, none of them had Red Eyes in their name, which made them see less play with more Red Eyes support needing cards with Red Eyes specifically in their name. Paladin of Dark Dragon also went through the same issues as it didn't have Red Eyes in its name. It also didn't have many cards to search for, since the only cards in Red Eyes that saw play was the original Red Eyes Black Dragon, Red Eyes Wavered, and Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. The next set phased out these cards, and they became binder food for the rest of their Yu-Gi-Oh! careers. Dragon of Legends 2 also gave two new traps for the archetype. Red Eyes Spirit was a normal trap that could special summon a Red Eyes monster from your graveyard. Red Eyes Burn allows you to target one Red Eyes monster destroyed by battle or card effects, and inflict damage to both you and your opponent's life points equal to the monster's original attack. Both cards were underwhelming as support, as Red Eyes Burn required your monster to be destroyed as a condition to activate it. It was even more off-putting to run, as it damaged your life points, making it risky if your life points were lower than your opponent's. Red Eyes Spirit saw some plays of one-off at the time because it was a free revival for your monsters with no restrictions. However, it being a trap card and having to wait a turn to revive a monster made many consider the card too slow. But funny enough, the card was released early on in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and was actually hit on their ban list, specifically because there just wasn't easy ways to cheat out monsters with over 2,000 attack yet. In the TCG, better options would be available to Red Eyes that would trump playing the card later along the line. To say the first line of support didn't do well was an understatement. The monster's support was hindered by being ritual-based, not having Red Eyes in their name, and having no new Red Eyes monsters outside of Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword. Even with new support on its way, the support from Dragon of Legends 2 didn't have any impact on the archetype, and was seen more as casual support for people who just liked to play it for fun. It wouldn't be until the next set, Clash of Rebellions, that Red Eyes would get new support and 6 new monsters, 2 new spells, and 1 new trap card, with 2 of them being Gemini monsters. Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon is a level 7 Dark Dragon Gemini, who on normal summon gains the effect that if damage calculation performed with this card, at the end of the battle phase you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to this card's original attack. Red Eyes Arcfiend of Lightning was a level 6 Dark Fiend Gemini. That Gemini effect lets you destroy all monsters whose defense is less than this card's attack. The deck also gained a great starter in Blackstone of Legend, a level 1 Dark Dragon monster that you can tribute to special summon a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster from your deck. If it's in your graveyard, you can return a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster from your graveyard to your deck to add this card back to your hand. Finally, to round out the main deck, Black Metal Dragon was a level 1 Dark Dragon that allows you to equip it to a Red Eyes monster to give it 500 attack. 
And when it's sent to the graveyard, you get to add any Red Eyes card from your deck to your hand. Two new extra deck monsters rounded off the monster lineup. Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon was a rank 7 Dark Xyz monster. Card effects can't destroy it while it had Xyz material, and as long as it had materials, it burned your opponent for 500 damage every time your opponent activated a card or effect. It also had a quick effect that allowed you to special summon a Red Eyes Normal monster from your graveyard. This card was the strongest from the Red Eyes archetype, as it continued to see play outside of the archetype due to its generic level 7 requirement. Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon couldn't be easily removed from the field and punish your opponent for playing the game. It was a staple for any deck that can make rank 7 Xyz monsters. This card remained the dominant and go-to boss monster for the deck. The second boss monster introduced in Clash of Rebellions was Arcfiend Black Skull Dragon, a retrain of the original Black Skull Dragon. Its fusion requirements were a level 6 normal Arcfiend monster, plus a Red Eyes normal monster. It came out at a whopping 3200 attack. Your opponent couldn't activate any cards and effects until the end of the damage that when it battled, and when damage calculation was performed with it, during the end of the battle phase, you could target one Red Eyes Normal monster in your graveyard, inflict damage upon equal to the target monster's original attack, then shovel that monster back into your deck. The primary way you would bring out this card was with a very well-known card called Red Eyes Fusion, a spell card that allows you to fusion some with materials from your hand field or deck. The monster fusion summoned by this card is treated as a Red Eyes Black Dragon. However, when using Red Eyes Fusion, you couldn't normal summon or special summon the turn you activated this card, making it hard to establish any other monsters outside of Arcfiend Black Skull Dragon. Black Skull Dragon also came with its own issues, as its fusion requirements weren't as easy as shown. Though Red Eyes Arcfiend of Lightning fit the bill of being a level 6 Arcfiend monster, it was a Gemini monster. Though it can be treated as a normal monster, it can only be treated as one in the field or in the graveyard, making it a problem to play Red Eyes Fusion, since it couldn't be dropped from the deck as a normal monster. So your turn would be spent getting Red Eyes Arcfiend of Lightning to the field and not being able to use Red Eyes Fusion due to the restriction of Red Eyes Fusion. In some cases, Arcfiend of Lightning would be dropped entirely for just the original Summon Skull, as it was a normal level 6 Arcfiend monster. But even that was a brick, as it didn't have any relation to the archetype and wasn't a Red Eyes monster. Needless to say, the fusion aspect of Red Eyes was dropped from the more reasonable Xyz build of the time, as Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon was the better of the two. The main deck monsters also had slight problems. Blackstone of Legends effects were solid, but it had the clause of you only being able to use its effect once per turn, and only once. So either you can recover it from the graveyard, or use it to special summon a Red Eyes monster from your deck. People would try to make up for this flaw by using cards that bring out level 1 monsters for free and prevent them from sporadically using Blackstone of Legends effect such as the effects of Kinka Byo or 1 for 1. The archetype did get some draw support to help filter. Cards of Red Stone allowed you to send a Red Eyes monster to the graveyard to draw two cards, then send a level 7 Red Eyes to the graveyard. However, the card was a hard once per turn. It was decent to draw support, as you wanted to get Red Eyes cards to the graveyard to bring them out later via Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. They even got their own version of Call of the Haunted in Return of the Red Eyes, a continuous trap card that you special summon one normal monster from your graveyard if you control a Red Eyes monster per turn. If this card is destroyed in your possession by your opponent and sent to the graveyard, you can then special summon a Red Eyes monster from your graveyard. Combined with Flare Metal Dragon, this card could give you two Red Eyes monsters to work with for your next turn, whether for Xyz or Fusion plays. This series of support for Red Eyes had potential. Its Xyz monster was a legit threat in the meta, and most of the support was dark, so cards like Allure Darkness and Dark Arm Dragon were viable options to splash in the deck. Also, Dragon Ravine and Silver's Cry played a part in the deck, as Dragon Ravine helps set up your graveyard and Silver's Cry can get your Red Eyes Black Dragon or Red Eyes Flare Dragon quicker than cards like Red Eyes Spirit or Return of the Red Eyes. Even most of the monsters being level 7 helped the deck, as the game had powerful rank 7 XCs you could play, like Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack and number 11 Big Eye. However, as stated before, the fusion aspect of the deck was just too slow. Red Eyes Fusion's restriction gave you no advantage outside of making a monster with high attack, and the fusion was barely makeable due to how Red Eyes archetype was built. The deck mostly saw casual play, but didn't impact the meta like its counterpart, the Blue Eyes, did. There would be no new support for Red Eyes until the release of the TCG set, Breakers of Shadow. And there, Red Eyes got a new support card and Red Eyes Retro Dragon. If a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster is destroyed by your opponent via battle or card effect, you could special summon this card and special summon as many of those destroyed Red Eyes monsters as possible. It could also be tributed to give you another normal summon for Red Eyes monster in addition to your normal summoner set. As great as this card's upside was, it was restricted to only bringing back level 7 or lower Red Eyes monsters. You couldn't apply to use with cards like Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon or most of the Red Eyes Fusion monsters. Other methods would also easily work around it, as cards like can banish or bounce cards to the hand would not trigger Red Eyes Retro Dragon. The card gave mixed results and would see on and off play. The next arrival support came in Invasion of Vengeance. Meteor Black Comet Dragon was a level 8 Dark Dragon Fusion, needing level 7 Dragon Monster and a level 6 Dragon Monster. It has 3500 attack and has the effect that on being Fusion Summon, you get to send a Red Eyes Monster from your hand deck to the graveyard, and then burn your opponent for half that monster's attack. It also lets you special summon a normal monster from your graveyard when it's sent to the monster zone to the graveyard. 
If you're wondering where to get that level 6 dragon from, look no further as Konami had that in mind and printed Meteor Dragon Red Eyes Impact, a level 6 dragon Gemini that a normal summon prevents all of your other Red Eyes monsters from being destroyed by battle or card effects. Both these cards were pleasant additions at the time, as Meteor Black Comet Dragon had an easier summon condition than Arcfiend Black Skull Dragon. It did immediate burn damage and floated into a normal monster when it left the field. The release of this card made it easier for people to play Red Eyes Fusion, as now they had fusions that would benefit them if they went first and had no other plays. This card helped the deck until the new Master Rule 4 completely made it impossible to place this card in the monster zone due to the introduction of Lynx, and reduced the impact of the card's burn effect. One more card in this set attempted to improve that. Red Eyes Insight is a normal spell that lets you send a Red Eyes monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard to grab a Red Eyes spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Having a card that can get Red Eyes spell and trap cards to your hand and dumping Red Eyes to the graveyard was a great addition to the deck. The issue was that the options of spells and traps available outside of Red Eyes Fusion were lackluster. Red Eyes Insight didn't have great targets to pick, as only Red Eyes Fusion saw consistent play outside of the bulk of spell and trap cards. The support for the archetype was not done, as more was brought out during the release of the TCG pack, Legendary Duelist. Three new monsters and one new trap were introduced. Red Eyes Baby Dragon was a level 3 dark dragon that, when it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster and equip with this card. When it's sent to the graveyard while equipped, you can add a level 1 dragon monster from your deck to your hand. The card had many good features and had so much search power, but the underlying issue was that it needed to be destroyed by battle. And in 2017, there were so many other ways to destroy monsters besides battling. So either you'd have to ram this card into one of your opponent's monsters to get its effect off, or watch it be removed by a spell, trap, or monster effect and get nothing in return. Gearfreed the Red Eyes Iron Knight was a level 4 Dark Warrior monster that, once per turn, when any player would place an equip card to this monster, you can destroy the equip card to destroy one spell trap card your opponent controls. You can also send an equip card to the graveyard to target and special summon a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster from your graveyard. As impressive as this effect was, the card wasn't utilized for its effect, but more so for the archetype's newest boss monster. Red Eyes Slash Dragon was a level 7 Dark Dragon fusion monster. It had 200 attack, and whenever a Red Eyes monster declares an attack, you can target a warrior-type monster in your graveyard and equip it to this card as an equipped spell card that gives it 200 attack. If your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a card you control, you can send an equipped card to the graveyard to negate the effect and destroy it. If this card was destroyed, you could dispel to summon as many monsters as possible from your graveyard that would equip to this card. This card gave Red Eyes a negation and a card that established board control. Another card would help this new board control version of Red Eyes, as Red Eyes with Chain was also introduced in Legendary Duelist. It was a trap card you could equip to your Red Eyes monster. It allowed you to make up to two attacks on monsters, and you could send this card to the graveyard, target one effect monster, and equip that monster to this monster that the card was equipped to. The monster that had the card equipped by this effect had its attack and defense equal to the monsters equipped. These cards were superb support for the deck. Red Eyes Slash Dragon made it slightly less horrible running fusions in the deck. Red Eyes with Chain gave Red Eyes Insight another card to search out outside of Red Eyes Fusion, and helped both give Red Eyes the menacing board control it needed. Red Eyes gained another card in 2019, and Red Eyes Alternative Black Dragon. This card could be special summoned by tributing a Red Eyes monster on the field or hand, and also lets you bring back a level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster from your graveyard when destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect. This card was supposed to be what Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon is to Blue Eyes, yet the card's upside was abysmal compared to, well, alternative. Blue Eyes Alternative could be treated as Blue Eyes White Dragon on the field or in the graveyard, while Red Eyes Alternative Dragon wasn't treated as a Red Eyes Black Dragon. Also, Blue Eyes Alternative would destroy monster opponent controls on their field, while Red Eyes Alternative had to be destroyed to get the upside. The only benefit of Red Eyes Alternative was being an extender for your rank 7 plays or link gimmicks. Regardless, Red Eyes had plenty of steam at this time. Dragon support was plentiful, with Return of the Dragon Lords and Dragon Ravine at their disposal, and was versatile, as it could either be an FDK deck with Meteor Black Comet Dragon combined with Infernal Fire Blast, or become a link deck due to the axis of number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk, which could produce tokens for you to be able to make link monsters. However, both still had inconsistencies. The FTK variant was too gimmicky, and you would need to see Infernal Fire Blast having no way to search it, while the Link variant still couldn't establish its board quickly like other decks and was still plagued by the haunting undertone of your board just ending on a fusion between Meteor Black Comet Dragon or Red Eye Slash Dragon. The deck would then need to be phased out due to number 42 seeing the ban list, ultimately ending the Red Eye's Link variant, and the deck struggled throughout the Master Rule 4 era. When Master Rule 5 came out, the deck was in the same place. It did become a splashable engine in most Dragon Link decks with the release of the archetypes like Guard Dragon and Rockets. Dragon Link, however, utilized just Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and Black Metal Dragon, as Darkness Metal was one of the best extenders in the game. Black Metal could be easily linked off for a Link 1 monster and search for Darkness Metal Dragon. However, in July of 2020, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon would get an errata, making it a hard once per turn instead of a soft once per turn due to how good the card had been since its creation and the countless loops Dragon-based decks could abuse with it. 
At this point, the archetype was bound to be written off as nostalgia bait until a particular release from 2020's Ten of Lost Memories gave Red Eyes the most powerful card in its archetype, and one of the most powerful cards in the game. That card would be Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, a level 8 dark spellcaster fusion that needed one Dark Magician and one Red Eyes Black Dragon or Dragon Effect Monsters materials. The card was dominant. Card effects couldn't destroy it, it popped monsters in the field and burned your opponent, you could also use the effect multiple times based on how many normal monsters used for its fusion summon, and it could negate your opponent's cards or effects once per turn by discarding a card. Then it would gain 1000 attack permanently. This card was everything Red Eyes needed to be a contender. It had all the aspects of what Red Eyes decks needed in one card. Red Eyes Dragoon was all it took to make Red Eyes relevant, except it didn't. You see, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon was such a great card with easy requirements that any deck that could splash it as an engine could make it. There were even cases of this card having a deck specifically built just for making this card. Dex would splash in Red Eyes Fusion to play the card and would use it by using Predaplant Verte Anaconda. This Link monster could send any fusion spell card or polymerization normal or quick play spell card from your deck to the graveyard to make its effect become the sent spell card. This card allowed you to bypass Red Eyes Fusion restrictions of being unable to normal or special summon for the rest of the turn. Players could establish a board, then go into Verte Anaconda to play Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. There was no need to play a Red Eyes deck when you could just play this card alone. Red Eyes was once again relegated back to being redundant. So ends the story of Red Eyes Black Dragon. Then 2023 happened, and we randomly got more Red Eyes support in Maze of Memories. Red Eyes Soul was a level 7 Dark Dragon. Unlike Red Eyes Alternative Dragon, it could be treated as Red Eyes Black Dragon on the field or in the graveyard. Whenever your opponent spells summons a monster, you can send this card from your field or hand to the graveyard to spell summon a Red Eyes monster from your hand or deck. It also lets you target Red Eyes Black Dragon and inflict burn damage equal to the Red Eyes Black Dragon's original attack once per duel. Though it's new Red Eyes support, it wasn't good support as the card special summons monsters on your opponent's turn, which gives no value to main deck Red Eyes monsters due to them not having any effects that happen during your opponent's turn. The burn damage occurred once per duel isn't game changing either. This card barely warrants any copies being run in the deck. So far, the final support piece was Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon, which was revealed in Duelist Nexus. This level 6 Dark Dragon monster lets you drop a Red Eyes monster from your hand or graveyard to special summon it. And if you do, you increase its level by 1. During your turn, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it to add a Red Eyes fusion from your deck to your hand. Another solid extender and surge of a Red Eyes that hasn't been said about the rest. These two cards finally round out the Red Eyes archetype on what has become the story of Red Eyes Black Dragon via lore and in real life. This deck is stuck on potentially being good. The Red Eyes cards are often clunky, and the execution of their combos leads to pitiful boards. Or, if anything, just a fusion monster. The best cards, Red Eyes Dragoon, Red Eyes Insight, Red Eyes Darkest Metal Dragon, and Red Eyes Fusion, all see better play outside of their respective decks, being splashable engines and extenders. This fan favorite archetype has seen better days. It may be fun for people who love nostalgia, but one thing is certain this deck was made around a card whose lore was based on its potential. It lived by its sword and died by it, and joins many other archetypes of what could have been a successful deck.